I want to talk about uh, devastation and um, feeling devastated by losses. Um, having some as an athlete, having some losses as um, as a coach, um, having some losses in the classroom, having some losses in life. Uh, devastating. Um, in terms of sports, for me, though, the most devastating loss in the history of sports was, I think it was April 6, 1987, when Sugar Ray Leonard shot Marvin Hagler, marvelous Marvin Hagler. You can look it up. It's late in the wee hours now, and I just watched that fight again. And that was devastating to watch. I'm sure Marvin, even to this day, is still shocked that he uh, that he lost. But let me set it up with a few things real quick. Um, on that particular night, I stayed in East Cleveland on a street called Delmont in the uh, the gut of the city and um, you know didn't have pay-per-view um, at that time or nothing like that so didn't get a chance to watch the fight I did a lot of reading pre-fight stuff and they, they called it the super fight and um, I even drew a picture afterwards. Um, even at this age now, I still think about Marvin like he must he must be devastated because Marvin Hagler is the um, guy who was supposed to be the monster and to walk right through um, Sugar Ray Leonard, who's supposed to be the pretty boy or the softy. Excuse me, if it was in the streets, the women would call Marvin Hagler a thug. And that would be the one who they would want to ride with in his vehicle and stuff like that. And Sugar Ray would be considered a pretty boy, like the one that cannot fight. So therefore, if man, if Marvin Hagler ever decided to fight Sugar Ray Leonard, man, he'd beat him up, man. Um, no. Didn't happen like that. Um, but that's the most devastating loss in the history of sports. Now, and, and I'll go back into that a little bit more because I got some time, but um, other people are devastated by different events in their lives. And so this is a concentration on devastation and feeling devastated. And I felt devastated before. Um, feel devastated in, um, in the fact that relationships don't work devastated by altercations um, with women that uh, manifest itself into hearts being splattered all over the place busted and try to hook valves up to it to, to do some type of mouth-to-mouth um, -mouth resuscitation and it doesn't work but um, these are the days of our lives and uh, devastation. But we're getting closer to the weekend and the wolf begins to wake up. Fangs and stuff start to come out. But for right now, for this night, I still want to talk about devastation. It was uh, a Friday night, um, a Saturday night, excuse me, it was a Saturday night when I went to bed knowing that Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Leonard was fighting tonight, April 6, 2000, excuse me, 1987. I was 14, I think, 14. Yeah, I know I was in the ninth grade, ninth grade, yeah. I was in ninth grade then. Um, 
So somebody, ah, man, you old. Yeah, probably. Somebody might say you young. Yeah, probably. But um, the memories of that particular fight still carry a lot of weight with me. And, um, I thought Marvin was going to win because I fell for the whole thug thing too, thinking that um, the whole thug status and that women cheer for that type of a thing, um, especially when they're young. I've, I've learned that they kind of change when they get older. Kind of want the guy who had his stuff together. But that's another story. Another story. But anyway, I woke up that Sunday morning and my mother told me that Marvin Hagler got beat and that Sugar Ray Leonard won. I couldn't believe it. Um, even to this day, I, I just watched it in these wee hours of the night. And I still don't believe it. I'm like, wow, man, Ray actually won. But when I watched the fight, I saw how he did it. He took him apart. And Marvin knows, just like I know, that he was supposed to knock him out. That's what he was scheduled to do. It didn't happen like that. So therefore, you can't really look for a decision. So, But Marvin Hagler never boxed again. He never boxed a day past that, April 6th. 1987, he never boxed again, and he was a devastating force. Um, now that I'm looking back, he kind of remind me of what um, Sonny Liston would have been like in early 60s when Ali beat him, and they didn't believe that the 22-year-old juggernaut, um, who name was Cassius Clay, who changed it to Muhammad Ali um, before this fight, would have won. So. Um, devastation and doing the unthinkable I don't know but I guess the message is to stay positive as much as you can even th even though you may face some type of devastation. Just uh, keep up the good work. Stay positive. And uh, let your spirituality build. And let the events of life be what they are. Chips fall where they may. Because obviously it's a, it's a greater mission being occurred and uh, accomplished. So, that is what it is. Y'all take care.